I recently had a chat with one of the main contributors of RuCode, and he shared some exciting new updates. For the people who are unfamiliar, RuCode is a fork of Klein, and it's essentially the same AI-powered autonomous coding agent, but with many more features thanks to its crowdsourced development. RuCode is something that lives directly within your editor, reading and editing files, executing terminal commands, as well as automating browser actions and so much more. He had actually taken a look at it a while ago and it has improved significantly over the past few weeks. Today we're diving into RuCode's latest updates, starting off with version 3.3. This is the update that brings in RuCode's code action as well as checkpoints and so many other new modes. Also, if you're interested in installing this, you can obviously install it for any ID that's available like VS Code, Cursor, or Windsurf. So go ahead and install this uh, if you don't have an ID. And then you can go ahead to the marketplace and then simply go ahead and click on install. This will open up VS Code and then you can go over to the marketplace and install this. Since I already have it installed to the latest release, you can then access it on the left hand panel where you see root code and then you can now start chatting with it. Now, what's really nice is that RuCode has integrated code actions. This is actually the first update that we're going to talk about. Now, code actions is where you can essentially allow you to quickly access different types of fixes and refactoring suggestions right in your editor. So you can take a look at the uh, light bulb and then you can have RuCode simply go ahead and explain the task. You can also have it so that it could unlock a couple of other functionalities like you saw. So in this case, since we had asked RuCode to ask what this section means, like by explaining the following code from the path, you can see that it's now working on explaining it. And then you can also have it so that it could then go back into your code and then add the new suggestions that it had created or added. Another feature is that they have introduced markdown editing. This is one of the most requested features and it's finally here where you can ask the architect as well as the ask mode to basically create and edit markdown files. So it would be easier for you to ever document your code directly within root code by having it create the markdown file for you. For example, you can then go over to the bottom left section and then you can go over to the ask agent and then you can go ahead and simply type in create a markdown file for me. And then you can send this in and you're going to see that it's going to be able to go over and use the ask mode to create this markdown file. And right over here, you can see it is quickly going ahead and generating this markdown for me. Another big release is the custom file restrictions update. This is essentially where you can have custom modes that can now be restricted to a specific file pattern or a job. So this basically means that if you have a specialized AI role, like a technical writer that only edits markdown files without interfering with other code. While there's no UI for this yet, but you can ask Ru to basically set this up for you. So it's easier for you to get started with setting up custom file restrictions for the modes you set. Self-initiated mode switching is another new feature where Ru code's AI can now intelligently switch between modes based on the task at hand. For example, if you're in code mode, RuCode might suggest switching to test engineer mode once it's time to write tests. And essentially, it has the intelligence to know what sort of mode should work based off the task at hand. Also, if you don't know what modes are, this is something that I highlighted in my last update. But essentially, you can have predefined modes based off of specific prompts for RuCode to perform based off of that instruction that you had given it. Now, there's a lot of small different things that I'm not going to highlight because it would just probably take a long time to showcase everything. But in the change log, you'll see that they have improved a lot of small things like bug fixes. And they basically refined the extension to work a lot smoother than it would have previously. They've also introduced many new modes for uh, supporting different model providers. You have different API providers now integrated within the settings tab for example you can go over to the api provider and then you can go ahead and select between many different types of api providers like requesty or you also have glama and so many other options that you wouldn't see with line and you can also use the vs code lm api which is where you can use the github copilot api that will let you use plot 3.5 sonnet the o3 mini as well as many other models completely for free 
restricted to 50 requests a month. Another huge release is the introduction of checkpoints. This is something that will roll back changes in case rule code takes an unexpected detour. So think of checkpoints as a safety net, giving you more control over how rule code interacts with your code. But this is where you can easily set this up within the rule code settings to enable it. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the World of AI newsletter. I'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis. So this is where you can easily get up to date knowledge about what is happening in the AI space. So definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free. To do so, it's super simple. Go over to the settings tab, scroll all the way down, and then you can obviously go ahead and enable experimental checkpoints. This is obviously an experimental, so keep that in mind. But now let's say we are working on this config file and let's say we wanted to uh, go ahead and expand on it. So go right a bit more in the markdown explaining what the file is and then we can send in this prompt and briefly i'll showcase what the checkpoint is after i finished doing this so you'll see right now this is the current checkpoint and you can actually go over to restore the checkpoint by clicking on this or you can go ahead and view the diffs so now you have the ability to view what sort of changes are being made and then you can go back obviously to multiple different checkpoints to go back to a certain version where rule code might have detoured or if you want to go back to another generation that worked or performed better than the one that you see right now there's also this new feature of having the ability to configure model temperature and this is per provider config giving you a finer control over how your ai responds in a different mode now this is something that a lot of new beginners don't know about temperature is something that allows you to bring in more creativity or exploration based off the ai's uh, preset of the temperature uh, basically a higher temperature will result in more creativity and exploration whereas lower one will be more focused on a precise and deterministic response and you can set up multiple provider configs actually for the same model with different temperatures so it will allow you to dynamically adjust AI behaviors based off the task. So for example, if you're working on a coding assistant, you might want to use a lower temperature for accuracy, while a brainstorming mode would benefit from having a higher setting so that you can get more creativity and exploration. And that's basically the gist of what the new update entailing rule code is about. Essentially improving existing features and enhancing documentation to create a better user experience. Now, this is a quote that I had gotten from one of the contributors of RootCode, where he had stated that what started as tweaks declined when PRs weren't being accepted quickly grew into a community-driven project with countless enhancements. And essentially, afterwards, he has stated that they're now focusing on shifting to make RootCode its own product, not just a fork by establishing a clear direction and a structured process for future development. So that is definitely really positive for the project itself. They're going to slowly depart from what the main sort of idea of Klein is. They're going to keep on enhancing it, keeping it open source, and working on this crowdsource development to keep improving root code to become an efficient and effective AI agent. But that's basically it for this update video on RootCode. I'll leave all the links in the description below. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. Follow me on the Patreon. Subscribe to the... Not subscribe, but follow me on the Twitter. As well as going over to my YouTube channel and subscribing. Turning on the notification bell. And liking this video as well as our previous video. So that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity. And I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out fellas.